Well, Jesse Ventura has reissued his best-selling book that he co-authored with Dick Russell, one of my favorites, updated and revised with explosive new material, American Conspiracies. And then, of course, he had the hit TV show for several seasons that got censored, uh, and then they didn't air it anymore, even though it was a hit show, one of their top-rated, and that was American Conspiracies, uh, Conspiracy Theory with Jesse Ventura. So very, very exciting that he has this new book out. There's so much happening in the world. I want to do a fast-paced interview and take some calls uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour at 800-259-9231 on a whole bunch of issues, and then let him get the points he wants to cover in some of the new chapters. It's thicker than the last than the last book. But, Governor, uh, great to have you back with us uh, via Skype, I should add, uh, better than phone, so thanks for doing that. Man, you have really lost some weight, buddy. You're looking good. Well, I'm working out. I've actually put a few pounds on, Alex. I've been eating too many desserts lately, but uh, that's what you do sometimes. But when I get back down off the grid, I'll trim up even more and get back in better shape. But you know, Alex, did you happen to see the Lisa Ling thing on CNN the other night where she did the special on the Mongols Motorcycle Club? I missed it. Oh, it sent shivers up and down my spine, Alex. The show ended with the song that I wrote. You're kidding. No. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. You were in the Mongols Motorcycle Club. Tell us about that. Well, years, many, many moons ago. This was way back when I was finishing up my naval career. I had finished my second deployment overseas. I was riding Harley Davidsons. And I seemed like the, it seemed like the right thing to do at the time. So, no, I'm a black and white. I'm a member of the Mongols Motorcycle Club, retired. Uh, but uh, they uh, they asked me, though, when I was there to compose a song for them for my chapter, and I did. And here it is 40, 45 years later, and the club still sings that song. I left my mark, Alex. I was so happy over that. I was just grinning ear to ear. I uh, never put it out, but we videotaped when you and uh, Harry Dean Stanton got up and sang some amazing rock and roll songs. We ought to, we ought to I mean, you're a pretty good singer and pretty good uh, musician. Oh, no, not really. But uh, I just had to laugh, though. It was a song, you know, in Navy SEAL training, you sing all these songs. And I just adapted one to the Mongols Motorcycle Club when I became a member. And well, the show's online. We just showed it. Maybe we can go to the end. So it's at the end of the piece? Yeah, it's right on the end of the piece where you hear all the... And it's heavily censored because there's a few nasty words in it that they won't allow over regular television. <laughs> well, that's that's certainly you know it's crazy to see something you did a long time ago, and then it pops back up on national yeah. television. Well, it, it start. We are Mongol raiders. We're raiders of the night. We're dirty blankety blanks. Who'd rather blankety blank? <laughs> <laughs> all right, shifting gears here. I've got to bring up Syria. Yeah. I've got to bring up all the things that are happening. But a caller had a question earlier. Sure. What is your line in the sand? tyranny wise and will you just leave the u.s if it gets too bad like you kind of halfway done or will you fight back is there a line in the sand where 1776 is the answer well my line in the sand for me would be if they had put me in jail i guess would be the bottom line sure so political lies. prisoner stuff well as long as i'm free and i believe that the the, the oath keepers are out there who stand up for the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, as long as those two things are still intact, I'm going to keep doing what I do, Alex, and that is being a vigilant citizen, mouthing off and talking and trying to make this great experiment, the United States of America, the best it can be. And the only way you do that is to hold their feet to the fire. Absolutely. You're wearing sunglasses today. Tell me why. I don't know. Just I'm getting back into Jesse the body a little more. You know, I'm being a little more of a villain now. You know, they've they've the Chris Kyle thing has turned me back into a villain, and I kind of like it. So you're going to bring back the pink boa? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe an earring or two, though. <laughs> I tell you, uh, they are the villains, and they masquerade as the good guys. I'm not saying Kyle was a villain, but he's certainly been proven in court to have lied about you. That's a sad thing. And, and, and hurtful, obviously, to the Navy SEALs and others, but just crazy how they've allowed the SEALs to be politicized. We'll talk about an update in your case. I know we never got to that last time. There's been some updates. But first, what do you make of Russia going in, already turning ISIS? ISIS is confirmed to be running into Iraq right now. It's Our top generals have come out. The former head of defense intelligence, who just resigned five months ago, said, no, we were ordered to create al-Qaeda and ISIS in the area. 
So our own military is coming out and exposing it. And then our government's trying to act like, you know, they're actually fighting ISIS, but Putin's gone in. I mean, I tell you, I don't romanticize Putin, but, uh, you know, it, it, he is really putting a major crimp in the new world order. What do you make of the whole Syria situation? Well, you know, it's, it's a mess. And, and what people need to understand is we created the mess. When we went into Iraq and the Libya situation, we destabilized the whole region. So now you've got this chaos that's going on over there. Now the Russians have come in, and uh, I tend to agree with Donald Trump. I think the Russians are going to get bogged down in there just like we are. I mean, we've spent $1.7 trillion dollars in the wars in the Middle East right now. Imagine what we could have did with that, Alex. They could have made Social Security solvent for 100 years. They could have spent that money and fixed our entire infrastructure just about throughout the United States of America. We're getting bogged down in these unwinnable wars. And I agree with Donald Trump. I think the same thing could well happen to the Soviets or Russia. They could get in there and get bogged down in the same mess that we're in. I agree with you, but the United States, under the PNAC document that you covered in one of your TV shows, Rebuilding America's Defenses, you know, written in 2000, issued in April, said we're going to go in, stir it up, cause immigrant waves, and then create a clash of civilizations. And Wesley Clark, as you know, in two different speeches said, I was shown the map of seven nations we were going to take down and destabilize. So Hillary didn't screw up when they went into Libya. The plan was to make it a failed state. They want to break up Syria. They want to break up Iraq. So... It's premeditated, so Russia has its only port in the Mediterranean there. Russia basically borders Alex, very... Yeah. What's the end game? Why is it they want to do all this and these, to all these countries and destabilize them? What's the end game? They want to flood Europe with giant immigrant waves and create another crisis there to demand what, a, new, a Marshall Plan to then get purpose? trillions to go prop up the Middle East. It's meant to implode the Middle East so they can come in and rebuild it and take it over. That ain't going to happen, no matter what happens. Are you kidding me? That place is in the Stone Age to begin with. Why I know. We, why do we care so much about it? Is it strictly the oil? It's got to be. Yeah. Plus, it's but got to be totally the oil. Because if there wasn't oil there, I can't imagine that we'd even have any interest there. You're right. I mean, the globalists only do something if it helps them on all fronts. The, the energy's key, number one. But number two, Brzezinski wrote the Grand Chessboard in 98 on this that it, it controls southern Russia, it's the border to China, it's the border to Europe. You control that middle area, they believe you control the whole world. Well, I would beg to differ with them. I don't think in today's day and age, holding one particular area will allow you to control the whole world in the, in the age of technology. I agree. To. But that aside, again, I don't understand. I, I guess it's simply... We're willing to trade blood for oil, and it's that simple. That's the reason we're there, and that's the reason we won't leave. I mean, look at Ronald Reagan. When Reagan was president, the icon of the Republican Party, our Marines lost 200 Marines to a truck bomb in Lebanon. Did Reagan go to war? No, he got the hell out of there. You know, I don't get this, why it's our job to go over there and make that place right. So that's why I asked you, Alex, what's the end game? There's got to be a reason they're doing all well, this. Well, oil strategic, but also the defense contractors make money on oh, losing yeah. wars. Oh, yeah, I understand that. They're, they're, there's always the war makers, that the profiteers, the war profiteers like Halliburton, who used to be Brown, Broughton, Root when they yep. got the uh, billion-dollar dredging contract in Cameron Bay from LBJ. And, uh, you know, so you know you're always going to have the war profiteers and I guess it's just they're that powerful that they can control our foreign policy, I guess. Well, they've certainly demonized America. I wish Russia well taking out ISIS because they're on their doorstep attacking Russia as well. But I agree with you. It could be another trap like getting Russia to go into Afghanistan in the 80s. I mean, this could be a big setup. Well, like I said, I, I, I think anybody that goes in there is going to get bogged down. And because, you, you know, I always like to talk about a thing that creates my policy on the Middle East, believe it or not, and it's Christopher Columbus. When he came on his mission and discovered the United States of America for the Anglo-Saxon world or the Americas, 
His mission was to find an alternative route to India to avoid the Middle East. Yes, the pirates. Now, Alex, if they wanted to avoid the Middle East back in 1492, nothing's changed there. And Columbus even, at that time, science said the world was flat. So if you went out, you'd fall off the earth. So Columbus was willing to fall off the earth rather than go through the Middle East. And I look at people and go, nothing's changed there. Wow, that's Why a good point. insist upon being there? Well, it's certainly true that it's uh, not a very happy place in history, and now it's really hellish, and now it's a big problem. We're going to go to break. I want to get an update on your whole case with Kyle, and there's been some developments uh, there. Then I want to shift gears in the election. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, I want to get into uh, the Second Amendment, where you think all this is going. And I want to talk about the rewrite. You've expanded the book. American Conspiracies are now on sale in stores and Amazon.com expanded. This is a great book. I personally learned a lot from it, even though I think I know everything sometimes you know, about conspiracy. This is a great book to wake people up. It's just really a fast read. Former Minnesota governor, Love Jesse Ventura, joins us via Skype. And I know that whenever he comes on, we put the YouTube videos up. If it's on Skype, it gets like 300,000 views. If it's not, it's like 50,000. This is an example of how great it is to have a radio that's also TV. People like to be able to actually look at our guest. And it's uh, feels like he's right here in the room with us. If you're a radio listener, you can go to Infowars.com forward slash show and see the feeds. This is only a six-minute segment, 18-minute segment coming up. We'll go to calls and cover news then. But, you know, I stand by people that I know are in the right. And the reason we raise this is it's about assassination of people's character. They've done that to me. And folks have stood up for me. You know, Matt Drudge came here and visited us last week. Uh, they've said that I influenced the Boston bombers, that I want cops killed. Everybody knows that's not true. They're mad that I'm trying to stop the whole kill the cop movement and reform the police at the same time. But Jesse Ventura, I saw you know, in the news that he'd been arrested, you know, basically out or you know, the police had gone after him in California at the airport. He hadn't been flying for two years when that happened. He was in Minnesota. Had to come on the show and say, I'm in Minnesota. Then they came up with this thing when, when, right when he went into Mexico, right when he drove in, knowing he'd be out of contact for a few days in his RV, that he'd been beat up and was glad that Navy SEALs were dying. That's how they assassinate character. I mean, they could come out and say, I'm a child molester, and people better not turn against me if they do something, or I'm a drug dealer, or I'm a, uh, who knows what they'll make up. It's just that I've already been through this, and it's, it's, it's crazy that they can get away with it, and now they're trying to overturn his case. They've got... 30-something of the biggest news corporations out there paying to, to fight Ventura to overthrow his verdict by the judge, by the jury, to overthrow his verdict, to allow them to have unjust enrichment. So they make $100 million lying about you, and then you can fight them, spend a million dollars, win a million dollars, but then they can make all the money because they're allowed to get enriched by it. Uh, I mean, that is dangerous. I mean, that means I could write a book about some famous person making stuff up, make a bunch of money, and all they can do is get me for defamation if I'm, you know, if they're lucky. Jesse, I'm kind of taking the time here, you know, putting my argument out, but that's why this is important. This is bigger than Jesse Ventura. Said this, this could turn it into a business for them to where they could defame anybody. They won't have to do any type of due diligence to see if what they write is true. And, uh, then, then they'll be allowed to profit from wrongdoing or to profit from lying. And they're hiding behind the First Amendment. They're claiming that the First Amendment is the reason that they should be allowed to do this. But I've stated many times, I support the First Amendment, and it's all about freedom of speech. And it's there to protect bad speech, not good speech, because bad speech needs protection. But... That doesn't mean you can go in as the as the old cliche is into a crowded theater and yell fire and be protected be protected by the First Amendment. Just as I don't believe it allows you to lie about somebody and profit from that lie, you should not be protected by the First Amendment from profiting from a lie. And that's in essence what they want to do with my court case: is make millions of dollars of profit from lying about me and then destroy my reputation. And his book sold nothing the first two weeks till he went on Opie and Anthony, and then he went on Fox News and everywhere and said he beat you up and because you were saying you're glad veterans are dead, which was crafted to destroy you and make money at the same time. Yeah, well, he, you're exactly right there. The book had a pre-sale of 4,000. 
he went on television and went on Opie and Anthony and O'Reilly and that, and 100,000 in one day. It went from 4,000 to 